and guys, it's Soros Fox here today, back with episode 2 of the FC25 Schalke career mode, and let's hope today is going to be a better episode than the last one, and we can start to build a bit of momentum, so we've got Elvesberg, Ulm, and Darmstadt at home, so I hope you all enjoyed the first episode, it does feel good to be back. And yeah, let's just get into a bit more of a bit more consistency and a bit more rhythm with the videos and then we'll get back to doing things. So let's get into things. Let's look at the team sheet. We've got some changes. We've got Divok Origi on loan from AC Milan. He's on the transfer list. And I think, you know, last mate isn't going to be as good as I think after just a couple of games. Hoyland, I think, is going to be great. So, Divock Garigi is going to be coming in as the advanced forward, not a pressing forward, because that is... Oh, man. Oh, it'll be a poacher, then. We'll train him as a poacher. This is what I'd mean, you know. It says, you know, you're supposed to do things, but because it's a tactical preset, you can't have it as you want it. And, yeah, so yeah, we've got Divock Origi in up front. Going back to the squad... We've got Divock Origi in on front. We've got Florian Coleman as well, the Romanian winger. He's on the free agents list, so he's going to come in. So them two players have been coming. Obviously, in the last episode, we signed Holtby and Newman. And obviously, we brought in Gustafsson. So we've, we've slowly rebuilt the team. And I think we've got a good team now in terms of getting forwards. I mean, Coleman is a lot better than Mur, but I think Mur will be a very good backup to Coleman. Coleman, a lot better dribbling, a lot better pace, a lot better shooting. So hopefully it's a big upgrade, and hopefully we start to get a bit more consistency now. So, yeah, I mean, let's get straight into things and hope for the best. I mean, let's have a little look at the tactical analysis they will be playing wing play, so that is what we've got to watch out for down the wings. So we've got to be on our best, well, we've got, to, got to put our best defensive performance in, and hopefully win. So yes, we will be welcoming these at home. So let's get straight into things. As football fans, non-stop hype all week long, and now for the action. It is a German city rich in football tradition. We're in Gelsenkirchen. I'm Derek Ray in the commentary position, and I'm joined for analysis by Stuart Robson. And coming up for you, action from the Zweite Bundesliga. It's Schalke, and they take on Elversberg. Well, thanks, Derek. I have to say, Schalke have been very mediocre in their first couple of games. They just haven't looked at their best. Maybe a little rusty, maybe adjusting to different tactics. Whatever it is, they need a win here today. And which of the wide players has the greatest effect on the game? So for Schalke, you have to say it was a great performance against Jan. Can he finish? Well, he hits it with authority. I think most defenders would expect to be booked, halting an attack in that fashion. And the goal almost bewitching in his it's, it's hit so cleanly with exact. Passing into the middle. And he got to him fairly easily. Carried away by the keeper. Well, such is the lot of an attacking player. And fed forwards. Real chance. And a goal. Real excitement here. The equaliser. An absolute spot to get past his opponent. He was. Let's see about the delivery. Well, capable of a better clearance than that. Could be troublesome. And foiled only by the crossbar. Ben 
sense of shame. Origi, the curve in front, and he scored not once but twice. They simply cannot stop him, and no wonder he's enjoying himself. Timing, what a goal! and the fans will be leaving the stadium with smiles on their faces well they were good today some of their passing football was excellent but they do need to show a bit more consistency can they now keep it going that's the big question and in the final analysis a really positive performance from this man Stuart well that was a great performance his understanding of how to find space was brilliant today and of course he scored two really good goals Appears highly likely to deliver in every way. Two very able teams ready for a top class confrontation. And no one is taking anything for granted on this huge occasion. It's live on EA TV. Hello everyone. You know, some footballers enjoy a rainy day. Not sure fans always feel that way, but an exciting match in prospect nonetheless. I'm your match commentator, Derek Ray, at the microphone. And sitting alongside me is the former Arsenal, West Ham and Coventry midfield player, Stuart Robson. And very much looking forward to bringing you this Zweite Bundesliga match. How's it going to go, Stuart? Yes, thanks as always, Derek. We've got two good teams here, so I'm anticipating a really good game. The atmosphere is electric inside the stadium before kickoff, and hopefully we're not disappointed. Can they nudge in front? And a goal to open the scoring. A very bright start to this one. in search of the equaliser half-hearted clearance and the penalty has been given here and now to level the game and he puts it away confidently not the best challenge, free kick the halfway stage in this match well quite simply he hasn't been able to make his mark great opportunity I think it's a good move for both him and the club let's hope he makes it might take the lead well quite simply we have to call that missing an open goal can he pick out can they forge ahead well they would have done had it not been for the keeper 20 minutes now Still could be dangerous. Oh, time. He's got to score. And all the way through it goes. Let's know it. Trying to pick out a teammate. Well, it came to nothing in the end. Well, this could really help the cause. Can he keep his composure? Oh, magnificent from the keeper. Pant and the keeper had plenty to think about with. And there is the referee's whistle for full time. Even Stephen here, they can't be separated. We were treated to goals, and Stuart interested to get your verdict. Well, Derek, what a good game it was. Plenty of chances, some good attacking play, and a couple of outstanding individual performances. I really enjoyed that one. Break. I'm joined by Sue Smith in the commentary position and we've got action for you today from Bundesliga Spy. It's Schalke and they take on Darmstadt. Yeah, cheers guys. Great to be here. I think it's important that both teams are focused from the off though and they start quickly. But I'd love to see some goals. Hopefully I've not just cursed it. Still got that defensive protection. Gone in a moment. It's played into the box. They're trying to set something up here. Oh, but the flag is up for offside. Having a look. That's not a bad save at all. It's been delivered. Well, that hasn't 
taken long. In front already. away not least the three points soon yeah it was a positive performance some of the play today was great to watch they moved the ball quick and created some really good openings to good results well he really has put in a first class performance today absolutely magnificent yeah he was class today and so were his teammates they'll be happy with the result everything positive seemed to go through him and he thoroughly deserves all the praise that he's getting so there we have it we have the completion of another episode and let's say it, you know i'm feeling good i'm feeling good it's been a good episode things are slowly starting to gel and get into place i think i mean looking at the league table we are shot up to third after five games three wins and a draw and a loss nine goals scored seven conceded two goal difference Obviously, the defensive work still needs a little bit of improvement. But starting things off against Elversburg, Divock Origi got a brace on his debut. We dominated with 11 shots after going one goal behind. We, we, tend, to, <coughs> we, we tend to start games poor and then we do work our way into things. But it's how things go. But I don't know whether that's good or bad or that's part of the counter attacking. Yeah, so we tend to start bad. We went 1-0 down in that match due to a free kick, which Lewis Holtby did give away. We just couldn't get rid of the ball. And I think we panicked. And we gave away a sloppy free kick, and it was a wonderful goal. So we went 1-0 down, but we rose to the challenge, and then we kicked on and got into gear. Like I said, Origi got two goals. So it was a nice, steady win against Elfsburg. And then moving on as against SSV Ulm. Very disappointed, really. I think we started all right in the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. But then we went 1-0 up through a Florian Coleman first goal for the club. And then we just dropped off. We just got a hit. Although I think the rain took its effect and we just conceded a very bad penalty. I mean, defending a corner, Origi on the line. He's gone to chest it into handball. We don't save the penalty, it's 1-1, and we just never got the rhythm back from there. And that's what I mean, we've, we've conceded a lot of set pieces, so free kick against Elfsburg, and all we've conceded a penalty, we've conceded a couple of penalties in the last episode against Dortmund, and it's just like, ooh, we need to, if we can sort our play out, well, can sort our defending out from set pieces and that, I don't think would be too bad. But then, Swift, Swiftly moving on from that disappointing result, um, we did play Darmstadt. And I thought Darmstadt would have been a much tougher game than what it was. Because, again, I think they're quite a good team. They've had two wins, two draws and a defeat. Seven goals, seven and assists. Well, no, seven goals and seven conceded for them. Not assists, sorry. Uh, I mean, yeah, we had, we had eight shots. They only had three the whole game. I think we dealt with everything they offered quite well. Again... The goal we conceded, we won the ball back and it was like pinball. Um, we, won, we won a good couple of challenges, but the ball was just bouncing around. Our two defenders get stuck together. They get a few lucky bounces, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. They've scored, but that that's the only downside to the game. It's just, That's been a the theme of this episode, like I said, the goals, the free kick, the penalty, and the sloppy goal. Three goals we shouldn't be conceding, really. 
but then that's be being harsh about being quite hard on the team. But yeah, let's not take anything away from the goal scorers. We, you know, let's say Newman scored from a corner, which was very early on, which put us 1 0 up, give us the lead. And then Emil Hoyland got a very nice poacher's finish, tap in to make it 2 0. And then obviously they got their goal, we've just discussed. And then again in the second half, Newman got a second goal from a corner. And you know, I was really pleased with him. He's been a cracking signing since we've brought him in. And I must mention Gustafsson in that last match had a hundred percent pass completion rate and we got two assists from corners. Fantastic. But yeah, I mean, you know, I think we're starting to gel a little bit now. Obviously, we've had to mould this team. It's still not perfect. But with the way things are, I think the new signings have definitely helped improve this team. Newman, like I say, Newman at the back has just been so much of an improvement. I think Gaminski was just, I think the age was, the age has caught up to him. We're trying to play high line with two older centre-backs in Kalas being 31 and Kaminsky I think that's where I was being caught out I mean obviously Newman's 27 he's got a lot of pace he's he's, he's a quite a good defender we cannot complain about that but yeah I mean Holtby as well he's he's brought something different to the midfield that we didn't have before in Seguin and Eunice and Templeman Schalenberg is obviously more of a Gustafsson backup and yeah, I mean, Caraman so far in pre-season, he was quite good. But for some reason, so for some reason into the season, five games of the season, he's not been as good as we thought. I mean, Divo Carigi, definitely, definitely an improvement up top, and he will definitely score more goals to come in for future episodes. Coleman is not been too bad on the left, could be better, and Silla definitely needs to improve. And obviously, we've had a regular fullback rotation. With Merkin and Donkor and Aydin and Katembein, if you say and Hoffman, <clears throat> he made quite a few. He's made a few saves. I mean, he did him, especially in the home game. You know, I think we've got a balanced squad now. I think, you know, we just need to gel. I say, like I said in the last episode, we got knocked out of the cup, but I think that is nothing to worry about in terms of the season because we could just solely focus on the season itself and get that promotion which is definitely needed and obviously it's not good that we've failed our con our domestic sets in the last 16 so we definitely need to get that promotion to please the board i mean i don't know how we're gonna sell players for 85 million pound profit i don't know how we're gonna do that but then we've reduced the wages by twelve and a half thousand apparently, so we, we we've done a couple of the objectives. So we'll have to work on them throughout the season as we do have strict object. Well, we do have strict board rules, and yeah. So like I said, to finish third after five games, ten points, the top of the league is still very open. And in the next episode, we do have two away matches, and they're not. That's going to be a very tough episode. Against FC Köln, Dusseldorf, and Greve Firth. So yes, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you've all enjoyed and continue to watch as the building process will carry on. So thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.